So I frequently talk about the importance of vitamin D3, K2, zinc, and magnesium for a properly functioning immune system. And this, of course, helps us uh, to have some protection from viruses, bacteria, as well as cancer cells. Now, another supplement that is essential for the immune system is methylene blue. Now, this is, of course, a bit more controversial, and there are more contraindications here. So people, for example, that are taking certain medications that increase serotonin levels cannot take the supplement. And of course, uh, pregnant or breastfeeding women should not take methylene blue under any, under any circumstances. So this is not a recommendation at all, but it's a supplement that I'm taking. And one of the reasons why I'm taking methylene blue is its great effect on the immune system. Now, methylene blue can affect the immune system primarily through its anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory properties, especially by mitigating hyperinflammatory responses and oxidative stress. And this, of course, is something that's very important in the protection from uh, autoimmune diseases, but also, again, boosting the immune system to become better at fighting off uh, pathogens as well as malfunctioning cells that we don't want in our bodies. Now, methylene blue can reduce inflammation by inhibiting pro-inflammatory cytokines like IL-1 and IL-6, as well as nitric oxide. And these are, again, key drivers of inflammation and causing tissue damage. It also has shown to have antioxidant activity. Now, the immune system produces reactive oxygen species, and this is always happening, of course, during our regular metabolism. So in the citric acid cycle, as we are producing ATP, we also produce a lot of waste. We, we produce a lot of free radicals in the process of making energy. And these free radicals need to be neutralized. Otherwise, they can become very problematic for the cell. And this is one of the issues why when we're consuming too much sugar, we're producing a lot of these free radicals and that can be very damaging to the mitochondria. That then downstream might lead to more damage in the cell, even to uh, damage in the DNA. So these are all issues that we might have if we have too many free radicals and methylene blue is actually very good at neutralizing free radicals, right? But it also supports the mitochondria. So, and this is something I've talked about in other videos before, methane blue fits really well into the respiratory chain and it really helps with energy production, right? And so one, it optimizes the production of ATP, which is of course the energy currency in our cells. So while it helps with energy production of cells, so making more ATP, it also decreases the waste that's produced, the reactive oxygen species. This is of course highly protective to cells, but also is highly protective to the immune system and the immune cells. This is something that's actually very important for a properly functioning immune system. But furthermore, methylene blue seems to have some direct effect on immune cell function. For example, they can directly modulate the function of macrophages and neutrophils, and this has been shown in animal studies. So besides, again, having these anti-inflammatory properties uh, and neutralizing free radicals, it can also directly positively impact immune cell function. And then, of course, and this is why methylene blue was initially used as an antimalarial drug, it has antimicrobial function. So it has antiviral and antibacterial function directly, and this is something that is usually in slightly higher levels, but that's something that's been observed, and that's why methylene blue was one of our first antibiotics actually. Uh, that is still, I wouldn't say it is, a, is an excellent antibiotic, but it has some function where it actually decreases the presence of these pathogens and can certainly help out the immune system in decreasing the viral or bacterial load in the body. So if there is a pathogen in the body and the body's immune system is trying to fight it off, the better we can down-regulate the numbers of these pathogens, the easier it is for the immune system to ultimately wipe it all out. And if you think of how an antibiotic works, for example, it, uh, antibiotic directly decreases the number of bacteria that are present and allows the immune system then to really take care of the rest, but it just really helps out the immune system. Ultimately, the immune system has to really eradicate the last remnants of these uh, pathogens. But if it's overwhelming, then it's very difficult to control this illness. And here, methylene in blue, I think, is definitely helping out. So again, I wouldn't uh, call it by modern standards a really good antimicrobial, but it is actually helping out. So it has this function and it's something that can then greatly help the immune system to take care of the rest. It is a lot more specific in terms of, um, you know, fighting bacteria and viruses than vitamin D, for example, would be. Now, vitamin D is, of course, extremely involved in optimizing the immune system. Here with methylene blue, yes, there are some immunomodulatory function that it has on some immune cells. Um, again, the main thing here is driving down inflammation, decreasing free radicals, helping some of the immune cells directly, but then of course being a very um, broad spectrum antimicrobial, it certainly helps out the body to rid itself of pathogens to then let the immune system take over and do the rest. So, so that's why it's one of the supplements that I do take together with my D3, K2, zinc and magnesium to help out uh, the immune system. Now. The question is then always, okay, dosing. So number one, of course, there's several contraindications. So don't just go out and get this. You have to read up on all the contraindications. There's a lot of interactions with medications, especially with medications that increase serotonin levels. So be very cautious there. Of course, again, if a woman is pregnant or breastfeeding, do not take methylene blue, absolutely contraindicated. Um, but again, if you're healthy to do so, check with your doctor first, of course. 
um, it is something that I think is very potent in helping out the immune system, especially in the uh, season that we're in right now, where you have a lot of uh, viral illnesses floating around. Now, dosing is going to be tricky because, again, here the uh, literature is all over the place. What's listed in literature at, you know, one to two uh, milligrams per kilogram body weight is usually for intravenous use. It's for the hospital. Then it's actually a pro-oxidant, so it doesn't really do the things we talked about in this video. So I take it in a much lower dose than that. I take about 7.5 milligrams daily. I take two days off per week usually. Um, in my clinic, some people go to 10 up to 15 milligrams daily. I rarely see people having any need for higher doses than that. Also keep in mind, it's taken orally. If you take way too much of it, it can actually disturb the uh, gut microbiome a little bit because it is an antimicrobial and you don't want to disturb the bacteria in your gut, right? There's not a lot that goes through there, but at higher doses, a certain amount will go through and will cause some problems there potentially. So again, in my opinion, I don't see any need to go above 15 milligrams. This is certainly not a recommendation for anybody. But uh, again, I take half of that. I take 7.5 milligrams daily with two days off per week. And that's been working quite well for me. Um, the literature, again, is all over the place. This one is these uh, intravenous doses, but also in terms of uh, other papers that you're reading, the doses that are recommended, for example, for uh, it, it preventing dementia, that's one of the aspects that it can help with as well because it protects the cells of the brain, might be slightly higher again. It's a bit up for debate at the moment where the right dose lies. Again, for me, for all practical purposes, I like to stick to the lower doses. Um, but you should always, of course, check with the healthcare professional because this is something that has a lot more side effects. Yes, it is still a supplement available over the counter, but you should be a bit more cautious on this one. But all in all, I think it's a, it's a great supplement to boost the immune system if you're healthy to do so. If you don't have the contraindications, it's something that you can certainly add in then to um, help with the other supplements I talked about frequently, the vitamin D3 and so on, to really boost the immune health and to protect you from viral bacterial illnesses and to really boost the immune system to stay healthy.